What's up guys, Justin Lee, you're watching another episode of Tech Tips. We've got a PO401 today, which is exhaust gas recirculation, insufficient flow detected. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do individual component testing on this Toyota EGR system. It's a vacuum modulator style, so hopefully this video applies to you. Let's get started. All right, so before we begin, I'm gonna talk about how the EGR system works on this here Yota. We've got our EGR revolver right here. It's attached to this intake manifold. And when vacuum gets applied to this port on top, the pintle inside will get lifted up and then allow exhaust gas to be recirculated and then thus reduce the emissions of the vehicle. And whether or not the EGR valve sees vacuum is dependent on the VSV or vacuum switching valve. The VSV is a computer controlled solenoid for when that the computer sends 12 volts to it, the solenoid will become energized, the valve inside will open and then allow vacuum through to the EGR valve. And the purpose of this is because we don't want the EGR system active at all times, such as when the car is warming up, at idle, or at wide open throttle. And so the computer will use the VSV to turn on and off the EGR system. And then over here we have the vacuum modulator. And the way that that works is that when it sees enough positive exhaust back pressure, this diaphragm will get pushed up and then connect ports P and Q and allow vacuum through to the rest of the EGR system. And then port R sees vacuum as well. And what that does is that in aid of the positive exhaust back pressure pushing up on the diaphragm, port R will use vacuum to pull up on it as well. So that's how that works. And then over here we have vacuum coming from the throttle body. So there's six things that you wanna look out for. A really common problem is that carbon will build up right here where the EGR valve meets the intake manifold and then that'll stop the exhaust gas from recirculating and then cause the system to fail. And so simply cleaning that carbon buildup out will fix the problem. Another thing that can cause this code is a failed EGR valve. So if the pencil stuck shut, that won't allow exhaust gas to recirculate and then cause the code to pop up. EGR valve is stuck open, that's um, one thing that causes a no start condition. If you have the check engine light, I don't think that would be uh, your concern unless you're trying to diagnose a no start. Another thing that could fail is the VSV. This is actually a really common component to fail. The vacuum modulator, uh, not so common, but it can fail. And then of course you wanna check for vacuum coming from the throttle body maybe, it got clogged or something. And then of course you wanna check out all the lines. So make sure there's no vacuum leaks, any exhaust leaks and stuff like that. And yeah, let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you guys how to test is the EGR valve itself. What we're gonna do is that, that one port on top of the EGR valve, we're gonna apply vacuum to it. And if the engine dies or stumbles, um, that will tell us two things. That the pintle inside the EGR valve is moving and that there's no carbon buildup at that passageway. And that's the most common place for it to build up. And so that's a conclusive test. It's a tried and true method. It's really easy to do. So I'm gonna let the car warm up for a little bit and we'll see how bad it stumbles. And then on this car, the EGR valve is located right here behind the intake manifold. And I'll show you guys where the where I connected my vacuum line. Right here is the EGR valve, and here's my vacuum line that I tapped in. And I'm gonna apply vacuum. All right, so since the engine stalled, we know that there's no carbon buildup and that the EGR valve is working properly. All right, so the next thing we're gonna test is the VSV. Luckily, mine is located right here. So this is the VSV, and when the solenoid is not energized, this should hold vacuum because this port is blocked. And then this port right here that goes to the EGR valve is vented out to atmosphere through this little bottom piece. And when you apply 12 volts across these two pins, or across the right pins, then the solenoid will click, the port will open, and then this port will be connected to this port right here. And so the way we test it is that we apply a vacuum right here, apply 12 volts, and then see if it holds vacuum still. So I have the VSV all hooked up, and when I apply vacuum, it holds it pretty decently. Apply 12 volts, nothing happens. Absolutely no activity. Don't even hear 
the solenoid click. So that tells me that this solenoid is dead. Here we have a good one, a known good one. And when I apply 12 volts across it, hopefully you can hear that it clicks. You can feel that it clicks too. And to show what I was talking about, when I apply vacuum, it holds it just like the other one, somewhat. And then when I apply the 12 volts, it just completely drops in vacuum. See that? That's because this part is opening and then venting the vacuum out through atmosphere to atmosphere. So apply vacuum and then 12 volts. And so we know that this one's good. So the next thing that we're gonna test is the vacuum modulator. And to test that, what you need to do is tap in with the T fitting and a vacuum line to the output of the vacuum modulator or port Q. And then when we rev the engine up, that should produce some exhaust back pressure that'll open this diaphragm and then allow vacuum through here. So by revving the engine, that'll open this diaphragm and then we should see vacuum here. If we don't see vacuum here when we rev it up, then we know that this vacuum modulator is stuck shut. All right, with the T fitting in, I'm gonna rev it up, and then if the modulator is good, then we'll see the an increase in vacuum on the output side. So, yeah, we see vacuum. All right, so we know that this vacuum modulator is good. To test vacuum at the throttle body is really simple. The vacuum only gets applied when the throttle plate opens. So just put your finger over it. You can feel it suck on your fingers. And if it sucks on your fingers, then you know that these passageways are clear and then you're getting vacuum to the EGR system. So once you got everything back together and you know that everything works, a good test that you can do to validate that everything's working is tap into the vacuum line that goes to the EGR valve itself and then rev up the engine when the car is fully warmed up and then if you see vacuum here then you know that everything else is good so right here all right you guys see the needle move ah should have used long lens So because the needle moves, we know that the EGR system, everything before the EGR valve itself is working properly. And yeah. All right, so here you can see that the IM monitor for the EGR system has been completed. And no check engine light, no codes in the system. Woo! That's how you diagnose a PO401 on a Toyota EGR system. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of Tech Tips with Justin. Peace out, y'all.